wave diffraction and interference. Remember when you see the pause video indicator to do that and take great notes. Diffraction is where waves bend around barriers. For example, down in the left-hand corner here, if we have a wave front coming in uh, and there's a barrier here, then these waves will actually turn and start heading outward here when they come around the barrier. If we have waves uh, coming through an opening like this, then the wave fronts will bend and create a semicircular wave front. If we have a barrier where the waves can go around each side, then they will bend around each side and eventually out here come back together and uh, create plane waves again. This is diffraction. The waves diffract around the barrier. The shorter waves diffract less around the barrier. The shortest waves diffract even less around the barrier. The shortest waves diffract least around an obstacle. The longer waves diffract more around an obstacle. The longest waves diffract most around an obstacle. Christian Huygens created a model for wave behavior that uh, does a great job of explaining why waves would uh, diffract when they went around or between barriers like the wave shown here. And what he visualized is he visualized a, a solid wave front right here that's being produced by a source down here and uh, it is propagating in this direction. It's a top-down view. He visualized that wave front being made up of a whole whole bunch of tiny tiny point sources. Each of these being little point sources like you tap in a, a ripple tank or a pond of water if you tapped in one location here. But he visualized the wavefront being made up of many, many, many of these individual sources, each creating their own circular wavefront. And if you put these sources next to each other and you continue to stack them next to each other in between even here, that uh, and if you put enough of them then their overall effect would be that they would create one big wave front from all of their leading wave fronts that these individual point sources would create for example in this other illustration these wave fronts that are coming through and going to be going through this opening between these two barriers being a, being made up of a whole bunch of these wave fronts uh, in this inner uh, this inner part, they would be creating one solid wave front that would continue to go forward from all of their individual contributions. But at the edges out here, since there weren't any others to contribute along the outside parts here, then the wave front wouldn't be straight anymore. The last contributor would be creating a curved wave front, and that curved wave front would continue to emanate outward like this. So this straight wave front would, would have been uh, made by all the contributions from all these individual point sources. And then this curved part would just be the contribution from this last uh, point source going outward. And that would explain uh, the curvature that you get at the ends and thus diffraction. So this is uh, Huygens' uh, principle and a good way to visualize why a wave uh, would bend around a barrier. Now, looking at uh, opening size uh, with diffraction and also wavelength and how matching the opening size with the wavelength uh, creates uh, different patterns of diffraction. Um, in this first model right here, where we can see that the opening is a little bit smaller than the wavelength, or about the same uh, size as the wavelength. So when the openings are small and about the same size as the wavelength, what we see is we see uh, pretty dramatic diffraction here. In other words, the waves are quite curvy as they come through. Again, with Huygens, there wouldn't be very many uh, individual sources here, so the, there would only be a couple of individual point sources creating the uh, curvy wave. Uh, 
When the opening is greater than the wavelength, then uh, you get a straight section in the middle part here, and so the diffraction isn't quite as great relative to the opening size. So this bending is great relative to the opening size. This bending is not so great relative to this opening size. And finally, if the opening is very, very large relative to the wavelength, uh, of the wave coming through, then the diffraction kind of is scaled down and you don't get nearly as much diffraction, again, with an opening that is very large relative to the wavelength of the wave going through. With diffraction, we saw how waves interact with a barrier or an opening. With this next concept, we're going to look at how waves interact with each other when they uh, um, interact. So we get a, a concept called superposition or interference. Probably more, you'll hear the word interference more than superposition. And what you see below here in this animation is if we have two waves coming at each other, we have a big wave and a small wave, they, oh, they go through each other. They don't collide, they actually go through each other. If you look at this, the big wave starting on this side will just go right through the small wave which started on the other side. And then uh, we can see that uh, then they kept keep on going as if nothing ever happens. But watch what happens in between right there. They add together. So while they're interacting, they add together and then they go about their way and uh, they don't collide. They go through each other. This is called interference. Waves do go through each other, but when they go through each other, we have two possibilities. One over here, they add together constructively. So they construct their constructive interference, where they add together and build a larger wave coming all the way up to here. Watch when they come together, they'll jump all the way up to there. And uh, so they add together positively, making the wave bigger when they interfere. Th this is a case of destructive interference over here, where one wave is positive and the other uh, pulse is negative here. And uh, they will momentarily cancel right there. It's hard to see. This is too fast. It'll cancel right there. We'll see this in another video later, but we can get destructive interference where there's really subtraction going on while they're momentarily interfering. These are great illustrations for showing that waves don't collide, they go through each other. They add together momentarily, they interfere. And uh, it shows constructive interference where the waves build together. It shows destructive interference when you have equal amplitudes and you get cancellation right here. Um, and then it also shows destructive interference where the pulses are a varying size, so there's a little left over after we do the subtraction here. So uh, get this stuff down in your notes. Let's look at interference in two dimensions. This is a ripple tank uh, animation where we have plane waves coming in and diffracting and creating two circular wave patterns. When they come through and interfere, uh, depending on their path length, they can create a maximum or constructive 
interference in this middle area and that's where you get the high light and high dark region and then you can have destructive and interference and create cancellation along this area called a, uh, a minima. So this is called a max maxima and these are called minima where they cancel and a maxima is where they add together constructively and another minima is where they cancel and you get an alternating pattern here called an interference pattern between these maxima and minima. And this is the illustration you should put in your notes to show the interference pattern in two dimensions. Next we have what are known as standing waves. And standing waves happen when you have a wave hit a boundary and there's a fixed uh, reflection and the wave reflects back. To show this in this animation we show one, it would get too crazy otherwise we show one wave standing still and we show the other wave passing it because if you have a reflection the other wave would come back through this wave and interfere and that interference would be alternately constructive and destructive as you can see from the bottom wave here which is a summation of both of these as they pass through each other. So we have uh, two continuous waveforms passing through each other creating what's known as a standing wave. Standing waves you get uh, on guitar strings and you, you know, can also get standing waves in horned instruments where the air columns are different lengths and so forth. So looking at this, when this wave comes here, there's destructive interference and this cancels. When it comes here, there's constructive interference and it's maximum. Again, destructive interference and it's gone. And then anything in everything in between constructive and destructive. Constructive and completely destructive. So keep watching this for just a second and convince yourself that what we're getting uh, from this wave that's just kind of standing there going up and down is uh, created by this um, constructive and destructive interference from these two waves interacting. These are standing waves. And so that you can draw an illustration of standing waves, since that other one was kind of crazy. Um, if you draw an illustration of guitar, uh, maybe guitar strings here, um, with their different harmonics. When you strum a guitar string, you can get what is known as the fundamental note, or the first harmonic. And with that, these just go back and forth. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and then, also vibrating on the string is what's known as the second harmonic, where the waves are standing waves, but there are two maxima here and one node. These are called nodes in between. And because there's two maxima, this is called a second harmonic or a first overtone. A second overtone or third harmonic, there are two nodes and three standing waves. And a third overtone or fourth harmonic, there are three nodes and four standing waves. These just warble back and forth, whoa, 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 and look like they're standing in place. This is a good illustration for your notes. By oscillating a slinky up and down, you can create a first harmonic. Notice that it's just the whole slinky going up and down. If you oscillate the slinky faster, you can create a second harmonic that has two maxima and one node in the middle. Even faster, you can create a third harmonic with three maxima and two nodes. And even faster than that, a fourth harmonic with four maxima and three nodes. <laughs>